After the Battle of Tobruk in June 1942, the Axis forces under command of General Field Marshal Rommel advanced deep into Egypt, threatening the British Empire's control of the Suez Canal, which was vital for quick supply of British troops in Africa and the Middle East. Rommel's offensive was halted at the Allied defensive line of El Alamein. The Axis forces were short on supplies and the majority of their tanks were Italian with light armor. Rommel was aware that the initiative had passed on the Allies and dug in to expect an attack. As the 8th Army, now under command of General Bernard Montgomery, was building up its forces for an offensive, Rommel used this time to fortify a 65-kilometer front and lay 500,000 mines to slow down Allied troops as much as possible. Rommel returned to Germany for medical treatment and was still absent when the battle began. By mid-October, the 8th Army could deploy 195,000 men and 1,000 tanks, including 300 of the newly arrived Sherman tanks from the United States. The Axis was defending with 116,000 men and 547 tanks, low on fuel. This meant that their operational freedom, which was essential for desert warfare, was limited. The battle began on the night of October 23rd with a massive artillery barrage that lasted five hours. The infantry in the north moved forward and stopped in the front of the mines until the sappers could clear a path for the tanks. Progress was slower than planned, and by dawn, all units in the sector stopped after the tanks stirred up so much dust that there was no visibility at all. At the same time, the 7th Armored Division, together with the Free French Brigade, carried out a second attack, hoping to break through and engage the 21st Panzer Division and the Italian Ariette Armored Division to keep them occupied in the south. The Allies met determined resistance from the Axis airborne units. At the end of the day, the Axis line was still intact. On October 24th, Rommel was ordered to return to the front after General Stumm, who was temporarily in command, suffered a heart attack and died. The Allies spent the day clearing the minefields to open more paths through them. At dusk, Axis tanks from the 15th Panzer and Latorio divisions attacked the 1st Armored Division. About 50 tanks from both sides were destroyed in this skirmish. Jeff Hayward, a machine gunner of the Middlesex Regiment and veteran of the battle, describes this moment in his memoirs. Not long after we had finished digging in, literally dozens of Sherman tanks of the 2nd Armored Brigade appeared a few hundred yards behind us and stopped, unable to get through the minefield due to the lack of cleared gaps. Then to our horror, tanks of the 15th Panzer and Latorio divisions appeared from behind the ridge in front of us, about two miles away. They advanced with the sun at their backs, and the opposing armored forces proceeded to open fire. We were stuck in the middle with the solid shot armor-piercing shells passing about six feet above our heads. The thrust of the 10th Armored Division that night was delayed. The leading tanks were caught on their start lines by an air attack and then scattered. By the time they had reorganized, they were well behind schedule. In the south, the 44th Division opened a path through the minefields, but when the 7th Armored Division passed through, they came under fire and retreated with 31 tanks destroyed. On October 25th, Montgomery decided to press the attack with the 9th Australian Division. The 1st Armored Division was ordered to support the Australians by covering their left flank. Across the rest of the front, the Allies limited themselves on patrolling until a breakthrough could be achieved in the north. When the sun set, the Allied infantry resumed the attack. The 51st Highland Division made progress and stopped after some companies pushed so far that they lost contact with the troops on their flanks. The 9th Australian Division captured an artillery observation post and took 250 prisoners. Fighting continued in this area for the next week as the Axis tried to recover the hill. Meanwhile, in the Axis headquarters, Rommel was back and evaluated the situation. The Trento Division had lost half of its infantry and almost all of its artillery. The 15th Panzer Division had 31 operational tanks remaining. The 164th Light Division had lost two battalions. All other units were already under strength and the men were on half rations, many of them sick. Their remaining fuel was enough for only three days. Montgomery decided to stop all assaults in the south after suffering heavy casualties and continued the process of attrition in the north. Rommel realized that and moved most of his armored units there. Starting on October 26th, 
Rommel launched numerous counterattacks with German and Italian tanks against the 1st Armored Division. For three days, the Allies held their ground, and Rommel called off further attacks on October 28th. It was Rommel's last attempt to regain the initiative. Meanwhile, the 9th Australian Division continued pushing the 90th Light Division along the coast despite their increasing casualties. By the 1st of November, Rommel knew that all hope was lost and began to plan the retreat. On November 2nd, Montgomery launched Operation Supercharge with the 10th Armored Division and the 2nd New Zealand Division. The 1st Armored Division was following to exploit a possible breakthrough and take on Rommel's armored reserves. The result of the operation was mayhem for the Allies. The 9th Armored Brigade charged with 123 tanks, and the Germans destroyed almost the entire unit with their long-range anti-tank guns. The Axis counterattack that followed failed as well, resulting in the loss of some 100 tanks. The British losses, however, represented only a portion of their total armored strength, but for the Axis, it was the majority of the remaining operational tanks. On November 4th, Rommel ordered all German units to retreat, the Italian infantry units were left behind to their fate due to the lack of transportation. The Allies tried to pursue with the 1st and 7th Armored Divisions, but the Italian Armored Divisions blocked them and were wiped out in the battle that followed. The Second Battle of El Alamein was the turning point of the war in North Africa, and the defeat of the remaining German forces was only a matter of time.